Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. It is a Write That Down Wednesday here. In fact, we're going to hit you with two episodes Write this down. of Purple Daily because Judd's Camp Notes is ready to rock and roll off yesterday. Look at that nice tan that you are forming, Judd's mm-hmm. Camp Notes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it was great yesterday. 70s, a little bit Very of mild. a, a yeah. nice, oh, tepid weather. I love this weather. It's Bring great. It. Yeah. Windows down when you have one broken and when you're putting broken. cardboard and towels Saturday, covered up. It's going to be fixed on... <laughs> Saturday, towel holding firm. I checked it this morning, holding firm. Yeah, what happens, Good. though, if, like, that comes off your windshield or uh, your window and then blows onto another car? Like, He's not like... using it while oh, he's driving. Oh, I don't use it drive. Oh, you just use oh, it Oh, no, I parked. roll down all okay. the windows now be, because I that found be... what I what I found is if you roll down, if you have a window broken and you're driving down a freeway, the wind hits the other win- right. windows and actually makes you sort of loopy. Yeah, no, but yeah, no, yeah. that's that's the problem. Is like the towel, the cardboard, and has to come off while okay. I'm driving. Okay, that's, that's good. It's a that's tough fine. life. It's a hard knock yeah. life for the it's sports football season. Man. It's football season. Football. There's no days off. Okay. By the way, people may have seen that glorious Roku TV at the beginning of the episode here on the YouTube edition. Uh, we are giving away a 75 inch Roku Pro Series 4K TV on the Score North app. Nearly an $1,800 value. You can register in the Score North app under Listener Rewards. A 75-inch Roku Pro Series 4K TV for glorious football viewing. Also, Quick Trip is a great place to stop before or after these Vikings training camp practices to fuel up, Judd. A hundred percent. I mean, look, first of all, there's Quick Trips all over the Metro, which is fantastic. And I talked about no days off. Well, guess what? In life, there's no days off. You're always going to need to stop somewhere to get gasoline, to get groceries. And now you're thinking, well, but sports dad, I go to the grocery store. And I'm going to tell you right now, you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, do not waste your time at the grocery store when you can get exactly what you need a Quick Trip. Fast, easy, efficient, fuel up there, get everything that you could possibly want there. Very courteous. There's always a couple of folks at the registers, but you know what? If you don't want to go in, be like a guy like Declan. Get that Quick Trip app so you can pick up your stuff curbside. Life doesn't stop, but you can make it easier on yourself by going to Quick Trip. By the way, I'm on, I think, eight miles of cruising range right now. It's invigorating. It's very thrilling. My my wife was very upset. We left the cabin on Wednesday. Good. And we left there, and then we're pulling in on 36 into the Minnesota border and she goes how much like didn't you say we have to get gas and I told her that probably 45 minutes prior and I was like yeah we have five miles left we're turning left right now don't worry about it we're fine she she did not appreciate that I took it all the way down to five miles yeah everything's fine we got we got tons yeah. of time does five, that. yeah plus there's probably a reserve after you hit zero yeah. you know, it's, no, yeah, have probably. you ever run out of gas no because I'm not an idiot well Dawn has and I'm gonna tell you right now <laughs> I was in the car and I was one pissed off sports dad and here's the problem too. If you are, well, why did on, you take it down so far? Why did you? I, what, what I there, didn't. Huh? I've always told her I'm the guy the halfway full. I fill her up. I want to see that thing on E. I want to see that gauge clutching the E or what? the F. The F. I was like, full. okay, okay. The F. Yeah. I like to nowhere see it near the, the E. Trip. Nowhere like, near the E. Excuse I don't do that in the me. winter. Like I, I don't let it go above, even close to a quarter tank in the winter. That's a different it, game. If you are running low on gas, I will suggest this. Never go up a hill because that will empty the tank. That's it. Okay. If you're going up a hill. Car advice from sports tech. Good car advice. Yeah, just what people came here to to hear and watch. Don't do it. Uh, Here's how Write That Down works on Purple Daily. We have two different editions of Write That Down. We've got the OG edition on the Score North YouTube channel and the Mackie and Judd podcast feed. Write this down. But on the Purple Daily edition, it's three Vikings or football-related predictions from each of us every week. They must be quantifiable predictions. We keep track of completion percentage and touchdowns. And listeners, if you want to be like Devin and participate as a guest listener predictor, you can send Declan a message through the Score North app. Write it down. You like writing things down. Let's get to the accountability session here. We'll start with Judd. Not a lot came off the board here, so we'll highlight some things that are still on the board. Now that we have preseason games starting, though, I think things are going to be mm-hmm. things are going to be coming off the board. So, uh, Judd, you said the Vikings will be on a version of Hard Knocks within the next two seasons, so they still have one more season uh, to go before we take this off the board. My question for you is: being around practice 
Do you think the Vikings would have been an entertaining hard knocks team this year? Absolutely. Oh, God, it'd be great. The, the whole Darnold McCarthy, not competition, but just the tutoring and like the, just the McCarthy storyline. Yes, absolutely. Brian Flores. So I'm not saying that to be entertaining, that it's got to be like a Dan Campbell circus, right? I'm just saying like the behind the scenes discussions and like how guys are being brought along. So yes, I think it would be very, very entertaining or would have been to watch if nothing else, Kevin O'Connell bring along JJ McCarthy. Yeah. I think so. I think McCarthy would have been entertaining in his own right. Absolutely. Some of the defensive players. Uh, Okay. Uh, I said here, still on the board for me because nothing came off. The following five players will not make the 53 man roster. Lewis seen, Andrew Booth Jr., Jaron Hall, Nikhil Harry, and Ryan Wright. How am I tracking right now for this five-item parlay? As much as I'm trying to will uh, uh, Wright not to make the team, that is, I think, going to be, somewhat surprisingly, your biggest speed bump. I think Hmm. scene is as good as gone. I mean, they put out that... um, unofficial preliminary depth chart for the game against the Raiders on Saturday. And Booth mm-hmm. was higher on the depth chart than I expected, but I'm sort of calling BS. Jared Hall, I think they're going to try to get through waivers, so you're safe there. Yeah, H- Harry's hurt now. And Nikhil, a- that whole experiment, that's he's not, gonna, he's not going to make the team. So I yeah. think your tripping point here is Ryan Wright. Okay. Now, just you said... Uh... You made it sound like you're you have an anti Ryan Wright campaign going. Is it more of a pro Seth Vernon campaign or yeah. an anti Ryan Wright campaign? Well, Ryan Wright just didn't have a good year, and Vernon to me is intriguing, and he's got a huge leg. Yeah. So it's not it's not anti Ryan Wright. It's just I think if there is a a potential for a shakeup, that's definitely a place now. But but here's the thing. As far as I can tell, Ryan Wright continues to hold for Will Reichard kicks. And as long as he's doing that, he's probably in very good shape to make I it. I feel like if you're yeah, if you're gonna make that switch, you'd have to start building some chemistry between the yeah. punter and the kicker, like the hold the holder. So yeah. don't you think that'd be a tell if Ryan Wright in two weeks from now, if they're both still in, in camp, if Ryan Wright is still holding for the only kicker that's in camp, then that's a telltale sign. It would, as our Agreed. kicking consultant Ryan Longwell would tell us, it would be a mistake to go like another three weeks and then say, oh, uh, Ryan Wright, you're cut. And now Seth Vernon's going to be the punter and he's holding for the first time right. with the specialist. Okay. Uh, nothing came off the board for the listeners. So still on the board, we will highlight this one from Eric. He said, Kevin O'Connell will be the head coach when the Vikings win the Super Bowl. Do you guys envision that? Do you think Kevin O'Connell is going to be the first Vikings coach to hoist a Lombardi? Brings a tear to my eye thinking about it. I could, yeah. I mean, do, do I envision it like, yeah, I think it's going. Like, can you envision it? Can you yeah. Can you see it? You guys both hesitated for like an hour well, when I asked it. it. I'm skeptical. Never a, they've never won one. Um, yeah, so just, I don't know what it looks like. Yeah, exactly. It's very hard. <laughs> it's very hard to, I, I mean, the starting point of my answer to, to your question is, I have trouble envisioning the Vikings winning a Super Bowl. Yeah, it's always weird when you see people like complete a Madden season or something, and yeah. and you'll you'll see like Mike Zimmer or Kevin O'Connell, yeah. you know, Kirk Cousins with his purple eight jersey and the confetti's falling. You're like, this is a bizarre simulation. That, but why not? You know what? Why not for Kevin? And then for Dex, we reversed this one from a week ago because it was reported that Dwight McLaughlin did indeed see time with the first team starters during full team drill. And uh, be- because you said an undrafted free agent cornerback would see full team first team action in the first week of camp, it is a touchdown pass for you. All right. And so with that, Declan okay. continues his dominance in the 2024 Purple Daily Write That Down season. Just a tick under 49% completions. You now tie for the lead with three touchdowns. Judd and the listeners also each have three touchdowns. I'm at 37% completions. Judd, 34%. Listeners at 31%. All-time stats dating back to 2021. Declan, 37.3% completions leads everyone 
Judd, 35%. I'm at 33.5%. Listeners, 23%. I have the most touchdowns at 47, but Declan is closing in fast. Okay. Let's get Devin in here. Our guest listener, predictor. And you are the uh, track and field coach for Hamlin University we were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Track and cross country. I handle the distance running. So are you, I'm just like, I don't know. Judd hates the Olympics, but I was watching like discus throwing for a half hour a couple mornings ago. I'm Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, hooked, man. The U.S. has the, had the best. I mean, she won easily. She won by like four meters. Valerie Allman. So, like, there's just certain things that certain people are so much better than. Um, yeah, the U.S. are dominating the distance this year, which is very surprising because the last one they were terrible. So, um, and my favorite meme yesterday was the guy who got third in the bronze or bronze for the 1500. His name is Nagu. So they just had. USATF just put a photo of a goose with a bronze medal on it. <laughs> How about so. have you guys seen this uh, the Swedish pole vaulter guy? Mondo. Who like he set he has set the world record. He like he had it won and then he was just going to set the world record. He's like clearing skyscrapers, it looks like. This guy's ridiculous. Yeah, he's over twenty feet and the every time he breaks the world record, he gets a bonus of like fifty K. So in the pole vault, they just move it a tiny bit. So he moves it up one centimeter every single time. And like his hometown of Sweden or his mother's hometown moves that up. They have a, like a, a construction thing that moves up as well. So they have to move it all the time. It's amazing. We should, uh, we should do an athlete challenge again where like the three of us try to do. Oh. I feel like we'd impale ourselves. If we say, no, yeah, vault. I'm not doing no. that. I did. I, I, did. I, I can volunteer the facility. You got this. Yeah, I might get hurt. <laughs> I did track seventh through ninth grade, but d- was not distance. Distance distance was not my was not my friend. The, like the the pole vaulting stuff. There's some of these events where like the first time you try it would be terrifying, right? Is there mm. is there some like beginner version of a pole vault? <laughs> like I guess a smaller pole where you're not going to fall twenty feet to your peril. I mean, there's no way like you can put like the heaviest person on the poles that he's using. It could be a 300 pound person. They're not going to break it because he generates so much force. Like literally you won't get off the ground unless you know how to do it. Right. (laughs) Right. That's what I was going to say is you wouldn't move. Yeah. You would literally just sort of hold it and sort of ride it across. (laughs) Yeah. But then it might, you might to to Phil's point impale yourself and that'd be bad too. I I'd rather not. I'll just watch. You could do the thing over that in Europe that they do where they just go over streams who can go the furthest. So you just hold onto the pole and run, stick it into the like river and go across. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that wow. sounds like a fun idea. Yeah. Yeah. So before we get to predictions here, Devin, what's your background as a Vikings fan? Um, so I started, I think obviously I'm one of the people that Randy Moss was the first introduction. Um, 98, I think the first game I remember Um, It's because we have a bunch, I'm from North Dakota originally, a bunch of Packers fans still there was the Packers beating the Patriots in the Super Bowl, but I didn't really understand that you hate the Packers at that point. Um, But I think my favorite memory that still sticks with me is I always listen or did listen to the pregame preach by Greg Coleman. Oh yeah. And when Christian Ponder took over his line that he said was, you got to have faith in this young Christian come to lead us. Yeah. So yeah. that was that's he was big that, on the puns. Big on the yeah. puns, Greg Coleman. The preach was oh, awesome, yeah. man. It was it was great. So, it would be it'd be like these disaster seasons or 2011 or like or 2010. You're firing a coach. Oh. You know, they're five games under 500, and Greg Coleman comes in and says, "All right, everyone, this is what's going to happen today." It's like okay. Yeah, a lot Appreciate of David that, versus man. Goliath always. Yeah. So. Love me some Greg Coleman. Well, Devin, we'll start with you. Over to Judd, Declan, and the back to me. Uh, the predictions must be football or show related and quantifiable. Those are pretty much the only rules. So, Write this down. fire away, man. Yeah. Um. Since you guys started to talk about it a little bit more, you guys uh, apparently finally got to see it in practice, and we got to see it in the game. I'm going to do one about the kickoff. So, um, because and I'm sticking just the kickoff, not punts. The Vi- I'm going to do a three point one. Uh, the Vikings will have more return kickoff returns than their opponents this year um they will have at least three and it'll be done by multiple people so it won't be just one person that gets a touchdown returns multiple people will have at least one okay yeah i was i was watching some of the just the the kickoffs from that thursday night game because it was the first time we got a chance to see what it looks like you know what what we don't know is is like the average field position going to be wildly different than years past is it going to affect scoring in some way like even if we don't get more returns for touchdowns 
could we see the average field position be further up or further back? And now, now games are lower scoring because, you know, the ball is five yards further back on average. Like there's so many things we don't know about what this is going to lead to. I think at the start of the year, it's going to be fun and, and intriguing. My fear is that the coaches are going to find a way to make it boring eventually because that's their goal. They're, Just they're, take the risk out of it. Their goal and, is to yeah. sap the fun from the kickoff. So that's my question is like, because I think we're going to have like a month of, oh my God, did, did you see that play? Yeah. And then, you know, some Belichickian guy is go going to say, here's how we dumb it down to make it really boring. I hope I'm wrong because it looks cool to me. Yeah. I'm actually Write excited. Down. All right, Judd, your first prediction. All right, I'm going to make Dex very happy with this. Write that down. The Vikings will have at least one successful fake punt this season. Successful being like successful. First, first, first down. down. First down. Okay. First down. The Vikings will con the Vikings on fourth down will go to punt. They will fake it. They will retain the football through oh. either uh first down, potentially best case, a touchdown. So I guess, but anyway, it will be successful. I uh I have a feeling that Matt Daniels is not gonna hold back again. Yeah, one of the most KOC. exciting plays. God, I love a well, fake punt. And I will, and I will say this: Ryan Wright can throw the ball a little bit. Can Seth Vernon throw the ball a little bit? Well, that's no. the catch the ball. That's yeah, exactly. You put that's, two punters on the, the field. Question. Maybe both. Dude, make the you could put two punters on the. What field? if you oh. snapped it? What? What if you snapped it to the? Oh man, I, there's a lot of exciting thoughts here. I'm, but anyway, I got, oh, I got you, Dex. Get... I got you. Fake Thank punt you. works. Thank Woo. you. Judd's getting all hot, right, hot and bothered and talking about been fake out of punts. camp. I've been out of camp. I've been, <laughs> I've been workshopping ideas for. I KLC. love it. You get like almost two weeks into training camp and you're just, you're out there. You're sweating. You're hallucinating. Yeah. You're, you're seeing mirages, fake punts. <laughs> Got no problem with that. Dex, your first prediction. All right, my fr my my computer just crashed there. That wasn't fun. There we go. Got it back up. Uh, I have a kickoff return touchdown prediction that I'm going to make later on, uh, but write this down, and you guys tell me if this is enough because I'm being very specific for a touchdown prediction for Saturday's game um, against the Raiders. The exact quarterback order for the Vikings will be the following. So the first three quarterbacks that come into the game for the Vikings in this exact order. Sam Darnold, J.J. McCarthy, Nick Mullins. We don't know what they're going to do yet, I don't know. I know. I know. KOC was saying probably on Thursday they're going to announce somewhat of a plan. So if I said Darnold, McCarthy, Nick Mullins in that exact order of the first three quarterbacks on the field for the Vikings, is that a touchdown? No. Okay. Right. I mean, it's that's the order in which they are We're on the depth chart. They are currently listed. Like, well, would, I don't. I if don't you know said if, if you play. said it won't go in that order, I would say it's it's, yeah. it's more likely to like if you were to say. JJ first or mm -hmm. Mullins comes in second, I would say it's more it's closer a difficult to a touchdown. touchdown right there, though. Because okay. I mean, because... you're trying to say that your parlay basically is that the three of them will play in that order, um, but that's the order in which they are currently listed right now. So it's a, it's a completion. I don't think completion. we can make that a touchdown. I'll take completion. That's fine. Okay. Write this down. Okay. Write this down. Theo Jackson's been the toast of camp. Judd's camp notes every day, other Vikings reporters highlighting how great once it's like back to back. He was great last year around this time, too. Yep. So write this down. Theo Jackson will force a turnover. I'll phrase it this way. He'll either intercept a pass, force a fumble or recover a fumble in a preseason game. So he'll either pick off a pass, force a fumble or recover a fumble in one of the Vikings preseason games. He will flash in that way. Write this down. Theo. The flashing camp. all summer. Yeah, exactly right. I like They're that flashing term. all summer long. Just flashing. Okay, over to Devin for your second prediction. Yeah, um, my second one's going to do with the London game. Um, so we're taking on Aaron Rodgers, and he was the bane of uh, the Vikings' existence for a long time. Um, I was going to say Sam Darnold, but how much you guys keep waffling or the people that you bring on say different things that JJ might start or might not. So I'm going to say the Vikings quarterback will out throw Aaron Rodgers yards wise in London. So if I, wow. I'm not saying the jets quarterback, if Rodgers is injured, I would say that I probably lost this, I guess. So if he doesn't okay. play. 
Okay. But by the way, we have an Aaron Rodgers prediction off the board on the Mackie and Judd version of Write That Down that I'll need the the group's ruling on. I just want to tease that for the other. Write this down. It involved me having to sift through like a YouTube interview podcast, some obscure YouTube channel that he was on talking about his Achilles recovery. So I'll, we'll, we'll, it's a tease. If you haven't checked out the other edition of Write That Down, we will do that. Write this down. If indeed the Vikings um, quarterback out throws Rodgers, it's impressive too because the Jets' defense is good. So like that, that that's would be a good day. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm guessing that's going to be Darnold. But all right, write this down. Write that down. Preseason prediction. Seventh round pick. Levi Drake Rodriguez, aka the Motor, will record at least <laughs> one sack in the preseason. Okay. So. He will record at least one sack. He continues to get first team work. Uh, I I actually tracked him in the uh, one on one drills between the D line and O line yesterday. Uh, it, he's fun to watch, man. He's is the fun. motor your nickname for him, or is this something that other people? Well, are they calling? Ca- they've talked about it, and I have adopted it. Now I I have not heard him called the motor. So, like, I was the first one to say that, but his motor has been talked about a lot. Uh, but this guy just doesn't stop. He doesn't yeah. stop. It's great to watch. It's fun. Could be a, could be a sod. Could be a, a steal, sod. A steal, a steal of the draft situation? Yeah, it could be good. It could be a really good pick, I think. All right, back over to Declan here. Write this All down. Right. Do we get – is it easy to find snap counts for players in preseason games? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, cool. P- PFF. Mm-hmm. Okay, so write this down. Dwight McLaughlin will get at least 15 snaps in the first preseason game. So pr- pretty right, heavy usage. Some run. Pretty yeah, heavy gonna, usage. Yeah, we're going to see some run of Dwight McLaughlin, maybe Fourth solidifying quarter, maybe. a 53-man spot. Hell, maybe even like a, a starting or, or a contributing spot in week one for that matter. But I, I think he'll get some run here against the Raiders. So write this down. Dwight McLaughlin gets at least 15 snaps in the first preseason game. Okay. Keep write this down. Okay, write this down. I would. I, I kind of want to go for a touchdown here. I'll, I'll throw the first two legs. It's a two-leg parlay. If you think I need to add something, you guys can tell me. Sam Darn. So it's, the, it's Sam Darnold and JJ McCarthy will both play, which is not like, I don't think a super prediction. But Sam Darnold, the first drive that Sam Darnold leads will result in a punt or a turnover. Okay. The first drive that JJ McCarthy leads will result in a score. That's my prediction. So a punter, a turnover for Darnold, and then a score for J.J. McCarthy. I think the probability of those things happening is far less than 50%. Like, it's it's probably less than 50% that J.J. leads a scoring drive, and then you're adding on Sam Darnold, yeah. punt, or... I think it's specific enough. Yeah. It's the first of first. You're saying exactly the result that's going to mm-hmm. happen. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a good red zone touchdown. Okay. It's not like yeah. a 50 yard bomb, no, like a, a Darnold to, not not a Darnold Darnold to Addison, Addison practice no. bomb. But. Oh, what a nice, God. you know, on the 15, nice little, little post route for the touchdown on the pylon. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Okay. Back to Devin for his third Write this down. and final prediction. Yeah. Um, so I believe in a little bit of, of karma with this. Um, the Vikings are a huge comeback against the Colts um, two years ago. I believe that the Vikings will blow at least a 10 point lead against the Colts this season. That's oh, my, my prediction. Wow. <laughs> and lose the game, right? And I will like, not leave. So, early. Yep, okay. yep. so they will have a 10-point lead at some point and lose the game. <laughs> yeah. You know what, though? We're always going to have that. It's it's Love tough because the, the previous record, the Bills and the Oilers game from like 1992 or whatever year that was, Frank Reich, that was a playoff game. Yeah. So it's it's remembered as this massive standalone game in January, and the Bills wound up going to the Super Bowl, and the Vikings Colts game was this obscure like CBS local regional. So people, yeah, Ryan, yeah, Matt but we Ryan. do we do have it forever on Netflix's quarterback now. So yeah, that's, that's one true. thing that's cool about that. Like yeah. I rewatched that before watching wide receiver, and it's. Just as good as the first time I watched it. So, and we always have on the Purple Daily YouTube channel, which I think I think it's up over a quarter of a million views. That Ventline episode, where Judd stares longingly at the TV, thinking, "Damn it, yep, I left the forced to leave, forced to leave by my bully friends." But but the thing about that Netflix 
the thing with Kirk that was so funny was in the midst of this historic comeback, right? And and like the Colts weren't good. So in retrospect, the comeback was shocking, but like the Vikings got their act together and in the midst of this comeback the sidelines going nuts and kirk's mic'd up and said and says of i believe greg joseph it's too far kick we should have got it closer it's like kirk is fretting this moment and everyone else like he's gonna make it this is great we're gonna win this game we have no business winning and kirk is like i don't know i know we had to get closer he's gonna miss bringing the nervous energy yeah that's kirk Yep. Well, Devin, great job with your predictions here. Since you've got this life-changing platform on Purple Daily, is there anyone in your life you'd like to thank that helped you get to this peak moment? Yeah, I'll I'll thank my fiance. She lets me watch this. She'll play video games while while I do this. She's not a, she's from Wisconsin. She could care less about the Packers, but her family loves it. So they give me just stupid gifts. So the one that sits and hangs in my house is a, a stained glass Packers thing that I will keep tell the Vikings win. And then that day I will drive and smash it in their front yard. Uh, (laughs) We might come along with you to, to do that. (laughs) Yeah. It can can be like, was it office space where they bring the printer Printer. to a field and they beat the hell out of it with a bat. That's the fax machine, right? The fax machine. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the greatest scenes of all time. That's an old school fax too. That's an awesome scene. The four of us, the four of us can do that with, (laughs) Perfect. Uh, I have, she she's just worried that I'll leave glass and one of the grandkids will step on it or something. So, but it's I don't okay. care. It hard it hardens. Well, tell them to wear shoes. <laughs> don't go outside barefoot. Get them some Vikings Crocs and they'll solve the problem. Exactly right. Wear shoes. <laughs> yeah. They'll be fine. Great stuff, Devin. Thanks, man. Good luck. Thank you. Do it again sometime. Thank you. All right, there he is. Good talking uh, track and field Olympics. Mm-hmm. Got yeah, the four hundred today. My no favorite that. race. That's this the four hundred. Yeah, the 400. I love the 400. I'll be at camp. That's just like one lap around the one track, lap. right? One lap. Yep. Seems like it's not that far, but you got to pace oh, yourself a little bit. You can't is, just sprint yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, I, I think it's the more difficult one. That one and the 800 are, are very difficult. Dude, the steeple. I was watching the steeple chase the other day where, so they're running around, they're all exhausted, and they have to like jump over hurdles yeah, and then hurdles. jump over like a hurdle with a water pit. And now their feet are all wet while they continue to run. Just I remember doing hurdles the first time in like seventh grade. And I did it once and I was like, I'm not, you will not make me do that again. That was horrible. I just, it, <laughs> it's, it's so scary. I have no idea how people like have the coordination to do it. And yeah, like stride. trip and hit your yeah. face. I didn't, I didn't fall or anything. I just like could not understand it. I could not understand how do you hop over this and then yeah. still run really fast. Yeah. It's, dude, out. this morning I was, they have like an indoor biking event where it's, it's like a short indoor track with banking, and yep. it's, it's banking a team steep. event. Yeah, I've, I've but seen that. I've seen they that. have like two teams. It'll be like U.S. versus Great Britain, and there's four indoor bikers on each oh, team, and they're just I, like racing around the track. I thought you said you saw this like in person in Minneapolis, and I was like, where did this happen? No, uh, no, on the, like, we're in the, sky watching the on the Gold That's Zone channel, now. dude. The Gold That's Zone all he channel. Does. You know, yeah. just to, to be clear, too, especially for Devin's sake, I don't like hate track and field like a traditional Olympic sports are fine. What repulses me is these made up sports (laughs) that get shoved into these games. So like track and field and swimming personally, I don't care, but like they're, they're quality sports. It's when they've made up these sports that they stick in the game. Dude, this morning there was, okay. I was watching live. So it's in France, obviously. So it was the, the handball gold medal game was Germany versus France. Did you guys see any of this? No, I'm going to watch the replay. I love handball. I'm going to spoil it right now. That's fine. Okay. That's so fine. If, dude, it was wild. So it's, it's and I'm not going to explain the handball rules because I only know probably like half of them, but it's the gold medal game. It's a French crowd chanting raucous. It's one of their favorite events. Mm-hmm. And France is up, and I don't know the exact rules in the timing, but France is up by two points or two goals or whatever with like five seconds to go. And the announcer in Germany calls a timeout. And the announcers are talking about how, I mean, it's just, I don't even know why they called timeout. Like, mathematically, it's impossible to score two goals. There's no way this could happen. So that's why you see the celebration. They're building it up like, what would they even call timeout for? So Germany comes out, bang, instant goal. France inbounds the ball or whatever. They get the ball back. And instead of just, like, throwing the ball in the air and letting the clock run out, French guy gets nervous, starts falling back, and, like, throws an errant pass intercepted by Germany guy two steps 
at the buzzer hits Holy the tying crap. goal. They Please. do a review. To, co- and they compared it to that, uh, what was the Miracle at the Meadowlands NFL game with Herm Edwards where he yeah. he picked up the fumble. It yeah. was like you're Super kneeling sarcastic. down and the guy got nervous and fumbled and the other guy scores it and they win it in overtime. It was so he farved, basically. Kind of, but like it, it would be like if if the game was it, oh, 09 God. championship I just, game. I, I you're don't. leading the game. You don't even have to pass, and you right. inexplicably oh, pa- yeah. you could just like oh. yeah. take a knee or whatever. You could curl oh, up in the God. fetal position. Yeah, well. And he yeah. got nervous. He threw the ball up. Are you watching, Dex? Yeah, that's. Oh my God. And Ripple. then they come back and they Ripple. win. It. They win it in overtime. Incredible. Oh my God. Incredible. Incredible. Okay, Judd is Judd's head's going to explode if we talk anymore. Olympics well, now right I'm now. thinking about Gobert so. being hurt. And his finger breaking and surgery and all of the unnecessary things that are going on at the Olympics. All right. No, Write stop. No, you stop because I was so mad on behalf of France. I punched a hole through my drywall. And now I have to call my friends at KS Drywall, which will help with full drywall repair, plaster repair, or that popcorn ceiling texture removal that if you look up on the sports dad's office right now, you probably see some popcorn ceiling texture that needs 70s. to be... 60s, yeah. Removed. If, yeah, if you have an older house that has that sort of, yeah, it's 1970s, 80s popcorn ceiling and you're looking to put your house on the market, that's something that you should have removed to increase the value of your home. Uh, KS Drywall services the greater Twin Cities Metro, Western Wisconsin. It's a professional, courteous, and clean crew, uh, quality craftsmanship, and they're able to handle anything from a new construction to small emergency repairs. No job is too big or too small. KSDrywall.com to schedule a free estimate. You can also find them on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, KS Drywall. Um, golf is an Olympic event. I saw Scotty yes, Scheffler shed a tear God. hoisting his. That was a great comeback, by the way. John Rahm, meltdown, Dex. Yeah, mm. I, uh, Rambo, Rory, I'm out on. Oh, I've been out on Rory too. for a longer time than Rahm, but both those guys. Um, you know what? Why don't, why don't you find your game, Rambo, Rory? At the Meadows at Mystic Lake. Why don't, why don't you, want, you know, help me out here to maybe shoot a 102, which I'd consider a gold medal win for me. Uh, you can figure out your game. You can book a tee time. Golfthemeadows.com. Stopped in there last week. Saw our guys. They're a great time. Uh, there might be more video series of Dex also coming soon. So if you want to see Dex, you know, make, make the arse of himself and play at the Meadows at Mystic Lake, you know, you can play there as well. Go to golfthemeadows.com to book that next tee time. Okay, now back to... Write this down. The final predictions here. All right, third and final prediction. The Vikings will have, uh, they, they lost 15 fumbles last year. They will have 10 or fewer this year that they lose. So they, they had problems. We, we've talked about this with h- hanging on to the football. They will lose fewer than 10 fumbles. And that's just to be very clear as a team. They had 26 total Last year, they lost 15, um, which was third worst in the entire league. So I do think they're going to rectify some of their... Now, the picks might go up because of Darnold, but the fumbles will go down. Yeah. Yeah, that was... I don't know. We talked about that the other day on the show. Just There's got to be some regression to the mean, whether it's through your own force or just right. the football gods. Write this down. Yep. So, okay, Dex, your final prediction. All right, I'll, I'll make that... Uh kickoff prediction that i teased earlier write this down we will see multiple kickoffs returned for touchdowns across the nfl in week one so we'll we'll, we'll see multiple kickoff return touchdowns across the league write it down all right a barrage of mm-hmm. hope you're right kick return touchdowns okay write this down write this down kevin o'connell is 0 six in his preseason career embarrassing <laughs> just embarrassing Oh and six. How can you get up and look yourself in the mirror before you walk into these arenas and stadiums? Uh, Kevin O'Connell. The prediction is very simple. Will win his first preseason <laughs> game this weekend. Okay. He will get off the Schneid. Write this down. The Vikings will win, and he will move to one and six in his preseason career. And they will hopefully shower him with Gatorade. They will carry him off on their shoulders. Hoist him up on their shoulder. He'll be picked up by by um, God knows whom, but he'll be hoisted off the field. It'll be great. Who would pick him up? Probably the probably the guys who played in the second half, right? I was like, going to say, yeah, like Jurgens and Rouse. Yeah. Yeah. Levi, actually, Levi Drake Rodriguez by probably himself. gets in there. 
by himself. By himself. He'll pick him up and O'Connell will ride off on the shoulders of the motor, just saying, Yeah, I finally won one. <laughs> uh so yeah, he'll get he'll get off the write this down. Get off the schneid. All right, boys. Those are the write that down predictions, the accountability session here, the only show and shows in America that has the stones to put prediction or statistics next to our predictions. And you can find the OG edition every Wednesday, too, on the Score North YouTube channel and the Mackie and Judd podcast feed. Be on the lookout for a second episode of Purple Daily today. Judd's camp notes in full effect. A lot to talk about. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl or a preseason game before we die. <laughs>